Good afternoon, boys and girls. Hey, it's Miss Beth. I'm here with your Sunday school lesson, and I got Cooper here, and he's got to move over a little bit because he sort of shifted when I got up to turn on the camera. So we have a new uh, book for this quarter, and the lesson is called Peter and, about Peter and Cornelius, and it's called The Gospel for All People. So, um, and it's found in Acts chapter 10, and remember that's the fifth book of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. Okay. So Cornelius was a centurion officer in the Roman army and they lived in Caesarea. And at this time, this was the capital city in the Roman province of Judea. Now, Cornelius was a Gentile, which meant he wasn't Jewish. And he didn't worship Roman gods. He worshiped the God that we pray to now, the one true God. And he and everyone in his house worshiped God and Cornelius helped other people and he always prayed to God. And one afternoon, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a vision and it frightened him, but gave him an important message. And the angel said, God has heard your prayers and he's seen how you help others. And the angel told Cornelius to send for a man named Peter who was in the city of Joppa. Well, and the Peter he's supposed to be sending for is the disciple Peter. Um, that was the disciple of Jesus. And that he was and the, the city of Joppa where he was was about 30 miles from Caesarea. And just to give you an idea, the church is located at exit 36 off Highway 77. If you go down to exit 5, which is Tyvola and South Park Mall, that's about 30 miles. And that gives you an idea of how far they had to travel to go get him. So Cornelius sent two of his servants and a soldier to Jaffa to get Peter. So the next day, as the servants and the soldier were nearing the city, Peter went up on the roof of a house to pray. And Peter saw a vision of something like a large sheet coming down from heaven. And in the sheet were all kinds of animals and reptiles and birds. And these, all of these animals were clean and unclean animals. And I'm going to explain what that means. The clean animals are mentioned in Genesis and Leviticus, where it is mentioned in detail. Now, the New Testament teaches that we are no longer judged regarding the foods we eat. The Old Testament um, was providing a healthy diet, and during that time, um, the, the cooking standards were not quite what they are now, and many of the foods that were unclean were unhealthy for people, and sometimes had enough junk in them and it could kill you if the food wasn't prepared properly. And then God also had a distinction between unclean and clean animals because it was, it was more than your diet and many of God's rules were to remind people, the people of Israel, that they were truly to be set apart. And in Moses' time, the clean animals were specifically used for sacrifice to God. Okay. So God designed many of the unclean animals for the specific task of disposing of the earth's garbage. For instance, vultures, you know, that you see on the side of the road, they can consume lots of really nasty stuff, almost as more than, it says here 59%, 59 times the amount of botulin that would not, it would really hurt a person badly or kill them. And that, and that like pigs right here, they're scavengers, so they eat anything. Bad, bad stuff. And like I said, with the cooking practices back in biblical times, this was not a healthy diet for people. So clean animals were cows and moose and duck and, oh dear, things with a cloven foot, things that chewed cud, things that um, didn't so much eat other animals they ate plant life and then as far as this the sea life it was any kind of a sea life that had fins and scales so oh and another unclean thing were you know alligators and snakes and squirrel and rabbit and cats and dogs we don't want to eat cats and dogs anyway but anyway i just wanted to kind of explain that to you so you could understand what the deal was with this so so Peter's on this route, and this sheet of animals is lowered to him in a vision. And all of a sudden, he hears the voice of God say, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. And Peter said, No, Lord, 
I've never eaten anything that's unclean or not used for food. So you got to imagine, by Peter seeing this with the mix of the unclean and the clean food, that was really messing with him. And again, the voice said to him, God has made these things clean. Do not call them unclean. And this happened three times. So you remember something else that happened with Peter three times when he denied Jesus before he was crucified. Hmm, interesting, huh? So, and then after this, the whole thing was taken back up into heaven. Or for today, back up into my ceiling. So, and Peter tried to understand what the vision meant. And honestly, what he was trying to show him is that we had clean animals and unclean animals. And in this representation, the Jewish people were considered clean and the Gentiles, they weren't supposed to associate with Gentiles or non-Jews and they would be considered unclean. Well, God was telling him, no, that's not how that's gonna work. We're all gonna work together and we're all gonna be clean together and considered clean and considered acceptable. So after this, Cornelius's men arrived at the gate and they explained that Cornelius had seen a vision and an angel instructed him to send for Peter. So the next day, Peter went with them to Caesarea. And when Peter got to Cornelius's house, he explained to Cornelius that God had sent the good news to the Israelites first, but that God does not consider some people to be better or other, better than others, or some people to be clean and unclean, just because they're not Jewish. And Peter further explained that Jesus is Lord of all, and everyone who believes in Jesus will have their sins forgiven. And as Peter said this, the Holy Spirit came on those who heard the message. Remember how we talked about that last week? How the balloon filled? When we put, when we put it over that bottle, it filled up with air. So when the people became Christians, they became filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, so, so this message is for the Jews and the non-Jews, the Gentiles. And the Jewish believers were amazed. And Cornelius and his friends and his relatives were all baptized in the name of Jesus. And Peter stayed with them for a few days. How about that? Pretty good story. I like it. Plus this, this adding of the non-Jews just adds to the people who are able to worship Jesus and take part in praising God and believing. So I'd like to thank you very much for listening today. Um, I'll go ahead and close us in prayer and then I get a couple things I'm going to share with you. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this beautiful day. Thank you so much for sending spring and um, starting to make some of this um, pandemic situation. Right now it seems better and we pray to you that it continues to get better because we do so want to get back to doing things together as groups and, and, and be safe about doing it. So please give everyone a good week. Keep everyone safe. In Jesus' name, amen. So I just wanted to share with you in a couple of weeks. Now see, this is March 7th. Next week is March 14th. And on March 21st, we are going to try and get back to in-person Sunday school. So if you are able to do it, if your parents are comfortable bringing you, we would love to have you back in Sunday school. And we're going to give it a try. So we'd love to see you. We miss you all. Um, I know that the recorded lessons are fine, but we, we still like to have you there with us so we can see your pretty faces. So thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next week. Take care.